Hello and welcome to not quite a review of Out There Omega Edition for PC, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. This is a space exploration game with roguelike elements that was developed by Miklos Studio and first released for phones in February of 2014, and it later came out on PC, Mac, and Linux through Steam. And now we have the release of the Omega Edition, which is an updated version of the game with more content and tweaks to the art and everything like that and that's actually what you're seeing here and honestly I didn't know this game even existed until the developers contacted me about it and that's probably because it is a phone game and I'm not normally paying attention to phone game releases so I'm actually pretty glad the developers contacted me about it because again I wouldn't have even known this thing existed had they not then so and so the question ultimately becomes first how did this transition from phones to PC? Does it work out alright? And more importantly, how is the game itself? Is it enjoyable? Is it worth playing? Well, as far as presentation goes, this is a 2D game with basically no animations whatsoever. It's all just 2D artwork that's actually very well done and very stylized, so it's all colorful, it's got a lot of detail into a lot of things, and in general the game is just very aesthetically pleasing. And then there's the sound design, which is fairly minimalistic as well, with some fairly basic sound effects for taking off, for moving through space, for interacting with the menus, it just kind of beeps and boops and such like that. And then also some music, which is very fitting for the game. It's this definite kind of space sounding music that gives a definite space exploration vibe with this hint of mystery to it as well so it's very fitting for what they've done with the game but again it's very minimalistic it's very clear that it was designed for a phone and even though the interface is fully functional on a PC and it works fine it feels like it was meant for a touch screen and in general the minimalistic design does work but at the same time it feels more utilitarian than it does meant to be aesthetically pleasing, even though it does end up being aesthetically pleasing. But obviously what really matter here are the story and the gameplay, and the story in this is that you are the passenger on a ship that is going between Earth and Ganymede, which is one of the moons of Jupiter if you don't know, and something goes horribly wrong during transit and you get catapulted somewhere else, not sure where. And so begins your journey through the stars trying to find some place out in space that you're not entirely sure what's there or why you're going there. It just seems like it would be a good spot to go. And along the way you'll probably discover something that clues you in more on the actual plot to the game which I don't really want to spoil too much of because this game is really all about exploration and all about just finding out what exactly is going on in space and why you're so far out there and that sort of thing. And it's also about finding various alien races throughout the star systems that you're going through and learning the alien languages as you go through which carry over into conversations as long as you're still in the same playthrough, of course. And on occasion you'll find ships scattered around, and sometimes those might include various things that are related to the plot, which again, I don't really want to spoil. But suffice to say, the game is different with each playthrough, but you have the same kind of overarching plot, just different ways of achieving it. And thus you get a few endings that are possible in the game. The trick is getting to those endings because this is a game about space exploration but it's also a game about survival and it draws very heavily from roguelike influences which means that if you fail your playthrough you're done start a new game and stuff you did in the previous playthrough does not carry over into the new playthrough so you start at the same place with the same loadout for your ship and everything and you have to make your way through the galaxy again. As you go through the various star systems, you will find randomly generated planets with different events that will happen on them, or different events that happen once you enter those star systems. Many of them bad, but also some of them pretty good. And on occasion, you might get lucky and get some new technology for your ship so you can build a new subsystem that gives you access to some really powerful buff or something like that. Or you could 
find various materials that you can use to build those things or to keep the ship fueled and full of oxygen so you can actually survive in space and if you run out of any of three specific meters which are your fuel your oxygen or your hull meter then you lose and you have to start all over again there is no combat, so all of your adversities are going to come through resource expenditures. You always spend some fuel and some oxygen going between star systems, going between planets within those star systems, landing on the planets, and so on and so forth. You spend fuel every time you try to probe for more fuel or to drill for resources. You lose hull whenever you go to certain types of planets and land on planets in general. And there's a chance you'll lose all sorts of different things with any of the random events, or even worse, you'll have systems either damaged or outright destroyed during those events. And thus, you'll need to spend more resources to either repair or to build a new version of that subsystem. And if you've been going for a while, chances are you're not going to be particularly high on resources unless you're just really, really lucky, basically. So what ends up happening most of the time is that you lose, and then on occasion you might get lucky enough to win. Here's the thing. The game is almost purely based on luck. There's only so much strategy and optimization you can actually do, and ultimately it just comes down to a roll of the dice as to whether or not you're going to make it to the end of the game or not. And that's really the game's biggest problem. While there are some issues with regards to translation, because this is actually developed by a French developer, and so the translation to English is sometimes kind of spotty, but while there are problems with that, and while the gameplay itself is pretty minimalistic, ultimately it's that luck problem that's going to either make or break this thing for you. And thus it ends up becoming kind of a really like it or really hate it kind of game. There's not a lot of in-between, which is ultimately why I decided to make this a not-quite-a-review. Because, let's face it, there's not that much to talk about with this game. It's an interesting concept, it's executed fairly interestingly, and aside from some translation errors and such like that, it's a well-made game that is pretty high quality for what it is, which is a phone game. And it does also kind of scream that in regards to how long your playthrough is going to be. Generally, my playthroughs were done within maybe 20 minutes at most, and that usually resulted in failure. The more successful ones obviously lasted longer. So I can't really see this thing having too long playthroughs, and it really does feel like it was made for pretty short sessions. Especially considering most of the time you're going to fail within 10 to 20 minutes, so ultimately you do end up having to take it for what it is, and what it is is a well-made mobile game that was ported to PC fairly well, it runs fine, it plays fine, and it's just hard to recommend one way or the other. I'm really not sure how I feel on it yet, because luck-based games don't really do all that much for me, but at the same time, I really like the idea of space exploration without combat, and this kind of idea of mystery that this game has. And some of the things that it does are interesting, but it ultimately does become rather repetitive rather quickly, so... It's ultimately up to you to decide whether or not that's your kind of thing. If you like mobile games, if you like repetition in your games, then you'll be fine with this. And if you don't like that, then you probably won't be fine with this. If you want my personal thought on it, I'm not particularly keen on the idea of luck-based games. I'm not particularly keen on mobile games. And I don't really like repetition, so I can't see myself playing this all that much. But it's still interesting, and it certainly managed to keep me playing it for at least a while. I can't really see it lasting over very long periods of time, however, and I certainly can't see it lasting for more than a couple of successful playthroughs, because after that, you've pretty much got it down. I'll have a link in the video description box where you can check this out if this has piqued your interest and seems like something you might like. Thanks for watching.